The sign above the one-way in slate gray building read, Fat Mark's Barbershop. The inside was packed to standing room only, with regulars all hoping to get their fresh blend by one of the four master barbers. It was a Saturday morning, so Sports Center played vaguely on the plasma TV, mounted high above the seating area. But street politics, wisecracks, and talk about the night before made up the vibe. The only windows to the shop were blocked windows, so there was no seeing outside or inside. A lone camera faced the entrance, so the barbers could see anyone approaching on the shop's monitor. Everyone had to be buzzed in, but there were the times people would catch the door opening as others headed out, and that was the case on this early Saturday morning. As an older black guy dressed in his GM work clothes exited the shop with his young son in front of him, two masked figures closed their path. The man's eyes shone with fear as he instinctively put his arm over his son's chest, drawing him close. The little boy's eyes rose with two AK-47s that were ushering them back inside the shop. There was a yelp of screams and panic, and suddenly two shots rang out. Baka, baka. The second barber, Tony, had gone for his 380, which he kept on his hip, and fired in the direction of the masked men. He'd struck one in the arm, but it proved to be a grave mistake, because the two men returned fire. Laka, laka, laka. The little boy and his dad were the first to feel the flames of the hot, burning rounds being rapidly thrown aimlessly around the shop, as the two gunmen sprayed side to side with all intent to kill. It was complete mayhem and a bloodbath. The shots seemed as if they would never cease. The two hundred rounds between the two drums were enough to kill everyone inside, along with anyone else who may have wanted to join them. But not everyone was killed when the shots ceased. All of a sudden, the two men had vanished from the shop just as quick as they'd come. Screeching tires signaled their getaway. The shop reeked of gunpowder and the smell of blood as a cloud of smog hung over a slew of bodies lying around the floor. When the smoke cleared, a total of seven people had lost their lives, including the young boy, who looked to be around eight years old, and his father, who lay soaked in blood with his arm wrapped over his son. Tony had been killed. His brain dripped from his barber mirror behind him. The two customers getting their hair cut were slaughtered in their chairs, one of them being Seven Mile Slim. His silk designer shirt was torn open by the wrath of the gunfire. His chest looked as if a tiger had attacked him in the wild. Slim's head was dramatically thrown back with blood oozing down the diamond Seven Mile pendant on his chain. Others lay dead about the shop while many clung to hope that help was on the way, and they'd prayerfully survive their own injuries.